Hey Canucks fans, it sounds like the Vancouver Canucks are closing in on right shot defenseman Luke Shen. This is my third video of the day, so I'll save you from you know the long-winded intro, the long-winded outro, but I will, for the third time today, wish Nucks fan number 29 a happy birthday. Okay, this came out on Twitter a couple hours ago, and it's Andy Strickland, and he's a reporter for the St. Louis Blues, and this tweet simply said this, hearing Luke Shen connected to the Vancouver Canucks on a two-year deal, and they followed it up by saying, players obviously can't officially sign until Wednesday, never done until it's signed. Yes, of course, it's never done until it's signed, but uh, you know, Andy Strickland is considered a, a pretty reliable source, and although he's the only one reporting it right now, you know, there's no reason not to believe him. So Luke Shen is 31 years old. He was first round, fifth overall pick by the Toronto Maple Leafs way back in 2008. And if the name sounds familiar to you, Vancouver Canucks fans, it should because he was actually here three years ago. He was here playing with Quinn Hughes. He was here in the 2018-19 season and he played 18 games for the Vancouver Canucks. He had two assists, was a minus four, nine penalty minutes, uh, no goals, obviously. But he, um, I see, I shouldn't say obviously, he had no goals and two assists. Uh, so his shooting percentage was zero, obviously. But he played a lot of that time on the right side of Quinn Hughes. And you can kind of see the player that really um, Quinn Hughes benefits from and that the Canucks want to put on Quinn Hughes' right side. It started with Luke Shen when, when Hughes made his, his debut at the end of the 18-19 season. Then for 2019-20, Quinn Hughes played with Al, uh, Chris Tanev. And then last season, he played with Travis Hamanick. And then you can see all three of them are the same kind of mold. Obviously, they're right shot defensemen. But more importantly, they are stay-at-home defensemen. They are veterans. They are rugged. They are uh, reliable. They will take the crease so then Quinn can do his thing. So you obviously need Quinn with a stay-at-home guy who's defensively responsible and reliable. And that's what Chris Tanev was. That's what Travis Hamannick was. And that is what Luke Shen is. Actually, I should say Tanev and Hamannick are still those guys, but you know what I mean. So Luke Shen, familiar with the Vancouver Canucks organization. Over the past few years, he's kind of bounced around a little bit. He's a two-time Stanley Cup winner because the last two seasons he has been with the Tampa Bay Lightning. This season, he played in 38 of the Lightning's regular season games, so that's not bad. The year before, spent time with the Lightning and their AHL affiliate, the Syracuse Crunch. The Syracuse Crunch, the year before that, was with the Vancouver Canucks. Spent some time in Utica and before traded to the Vancouver Canucks for Michael Delzato from the Anaheim Ducks. He was with Anaheim, playing a few games with their, their Anaheim Ducks, the big team, and then playing on their AHL affiliate, the San Diego Gulls. For the last few years, then, he has been splitting time then between the AHL and the NHL. But this is obviously a good signing if the money comes in right. So we've already talked about why he'd be an important, a good complimentary piece. He's played here before, and he's played with Quinn Hughes before when Quinn Hughes made his debut at the end of the 2018-2019 season. Now, uh, let's talk about his contract. Well, he's, uh, like I said, he's been in the leagues uh, for many years, 2008, since then. His last contract, he's coming off a contract that paid him only $800,000 with Tampa so even if he gets a small raise over that and if you're signing him to two years instead of one year um, you know I think maybe if he comes in anywhere between 850 and 1 million I think we're okay I think Travis Hamannick had 1.2 or 1.25 last season I wouldn't give him Hamannick money but you are getting two years out of him so maybe you have to give him a tiny bit more than minimum so I think if he comes in anywhere between 850 and 1 million that's a tidy piece of business for the Vancouver Canucks. So look for, if it is indeed two years, like Andy Strickland uh, is reporting, then yeah, I, if I had to guess, I'd say 900, 950,000 for uh, each of those two years. Now, where does he fit in? That's the tricky part because this Nate Schmidt potential trade is I think the biggest now question mark when it comes to the, the Canucks, especially on their D. Up front, their top nine is set. You can argue with Mott and McEwen and Highmore fighting for one spot. You could say 11 of the 12 spots are set up front. You just need to find a fourth line center. Uh, I talked about the today, whether that's Boyd or Sutter or someone else. On D, your left side set, is set with, all, I almost said a bad word there, with Oliver ekman Larson, with Quinn Hughes, with Jack Rathbone, with Ole Levy fighting to get in as well. On the right side, you know you have Tyler Myers. Now, if Nate Schmidt stays and Travis Hamannick, say, doesn't come back, then you could go 
Schmidt, Myers, and, and, and Shen. And then I would go OEL with Schmidt, Hughes with Shen, and then Rathbone with Myers. And if you really wanted a th true third pairing, you could switch Myers and Shen and go Rathbone with Shen and then Hughes with Myers. You could do that as well. So it gives the Canucks some options. Obviously, even more options if Hammack does come back. And then now Luke Shen is basically your seventh defenseman or he's like the fourth guy on the right side. But at least the good thing, or maybe Schmidt goes, that gets traded, and then Hammack is the one that comes back. Regardless, this signing, this rumored signing, which we're going to, presume is going to happen on Wednesday is a good signing for the Vancouver Canucks. It gives them a reliable player, a low maintenance player. Everyone says this, this guy's been a great teammate. Um, he brings leadership, obviously given his age, given his pedigree, two Stanley cup championships to his name now. Um, and, and the familiarity with the Vancouver Canucks system and granted it was two seasons ago, but even playing with Quinn Hughes and a few, not all, but a few of the players that we have on our roster. And I'm just looking at, uh, you know, Luke Shen's, contracts throughout his season his entry level was 875 for three years then check this out he had a five-year contract worth 18 million dollars so he was getting 3.6 for five years straight and then as play tailed off then he had a, two years at 1.25 and then a year at 800 and then a year at 700 and then a year at 800 so he hasn't been making a lot of money the past three seasons 800 700 800 maybe he gets a small raise like i said because we're signing him for two years instead of one so maybe it's you know maybe it's 900 to a million max but i think that's a that's a good deal so canucks fans let me know what you think about luke shen coming back do you remember him from a couple seasons ago do you remember that he was that solid right side partner for quinn hughes do you remember him being a good teammate? And do you remember that we, it was actually, I think a lot of people wanted him to get re-signed after that 2018-19 season, but alas, he ends up going to Tampa Bay. And I, I'm sure he doesn't regret it, given that he's won two Stanley Cups with them. So Luke Shen, rumored to be coming to the Vancouver Canucks on a two-year deal, as reported by Andy Strickland of the St. Louis Blues. Doesn't work for the Blues, but covers the Blues. And uh, so I think he's a pretty reliable source. Canucks fans, let me know what you think of this potential deal do you like it? Do you not like it? Whatever it is. By the way, that's my new ping pong table back there. Um, yeah, I just got done playing with uh, Jake and Sean. Jake beat me three games to two. Sean beat me two games to one. So while I took a couple games um, off the... No, Sean beat me three... Oh my gosh. Both kids beat me three games to two. So winning percentage of 400. Not the best, but at least I was able to take a couple games off both of my boys. Okay. Leave a comment below. I'll, I'll, I'll do the shoutouts. Shoutouts to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Justin Credible, Nux Fan number 29, Lucas Gates, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Che Family Channel, Jamie Sports Talk and more, Shannon Hollingworth, and Andrew Chang. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or in my videos or on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. So blessed we have rammed past the 6,800 subscriber mark. Actually, I think we're going to get to 7,000 by the end of the summer. I, I was aiming for it by the start of the season, but it might be by the end of August at this rate. But we'll see. But yes, we was able to get through that last 100 subscribers pretty quickly. So thanks again for your support. And don't forget, at 7,000, I might do a giveaway. I might include um, some tickets to a uh, Vancouver Cats game this season. We'll see what happens. Thanks, everyone. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Become a member of this channel if you'd like to. Stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great night. See you tomorrow morning. God bless and go Canucks go.